Hi all, in this video, let's learn six dev tools for the JavaScript developers, which will help us at the time of development in one way or the other. So these are the six things we are uh, dev tools, which we are trying to learn in this video. So let's jump in. So this is a sample application. Here, if you want to identify, I mean, uh, I want to understand who is changing or which function or event is causing this element change. So this is a one DOM. Let's say this button is a DOM element. I want to understand which function or event is causing changes to this function, this DOM element. So for that, to, you need to right click that element and you need to break on subtree modifications or attribute modifications or node removal. So if you keep um, attribute or uh, modifications, if any attribute was modified to this element in any of the function or to any of the event, will be pointing to that event. So here we have a simple example, but here my aim is to show this dev tool to make sure that if by accidentally, if we remove any of the node from your application, you need to understand which piece of code is responsible for removing this element from the DOM. So that that is the use case here. So let's check now. So I'm just keeping an attribute modification here. You can keep all the three checked. So now I kept a break on attribute modification for the button. So now if anyone tries to modify this button element, then we'll be going the code, the execution trigger will be going to the piece of function or the element. So let's check that. So now see this piece of function and the event is responsible and it is modifying this element, button element. So in that way, you can locate what all the functions or events are executing or modifying the DOM elements. So that's the first one, first example of understanding. So, okay, I have kept the infinity loop as well. So let's keep this infinity loop comment. Yep. So the second one would be, knowing about the infinity loop. So you may heard about the for loop, while loop in JavaScript. So sometimes our code may lead to the infinity loops. If we did not kept the condition correctly in the for loop, while loop and to while loop, these things may execute into the infinity loop. So when we get an infinity loop, what happens exactly? So the browser eats all the memory and in the browser would be st stuck at one point. So we can't identify where the, exactly which code is causing the infinity loop because in our code, there would be n number of for loops. We can't identify what the, which function or which for loop is exactly causing this infinity loop. So in that case, so let me remove this first. So otherwise we'll be, we'll get a breakpoint at this point. Okay. Now, how to halt the infinity loop and how to find out where the infinity loop is occurring. So let's check that. So to check that, I will be uncommenting this code. So now I have wrote one do a loop, which will cause the infinity loop, okay? See, once if I trigger this start infinity loop, then will be this code would be executing and, the, and it would be lead to the infinity loop. How to find out exactly this is a piece of code which is occurring or causing the infinity loop. So once if you click this, I mean the start loop, so now the infinity loop is running at the background. So you need to understand which code is responsible or which loop is responsible. In that case, you need to click this. You need to hold it and release it. So now you can understand this is a piece of code. One second. So now you can understand. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I need to refresh it again. So it is showing some other piece of code. Yep, now we this code was loaded. So now again, I'm doing the start infinity loop. So now in the background, uh, we have run the infinity loop. At some point, the memory would be full and the DOM would be leaked. I mean, the browser would be struck. So how to find out exactly which piece of code is causing this error? So hold on this button. So just I'm holding it and releasing. So you can observe. This is a piece of code which is responsible for this infinity loop the execution point went to this place. It means this is a piece of code which leads to the infinity loop. So now we need to adjust this condition. So we need to understand, okay, this condition is responsible for this infinity loop. So now we need to adjust this code. 
so we need to stop this halt i mean in now now also the n value you see this many times the loop was occurred so now we need to stop this infinity loop again you need to click this down arrow here and you got this stop button so if you click this it will be stopped so this is where you we need to halt the infinity loops and we need to understand which piece of code is causing this code uh, in as an infinity loop yep i will comment out this yeah the third one would be like bo black box script for example sometimes you would be debugging code very seriously so at that point suddenly you may shift it from the third party libraries from the debugging in the code from your point to the third party libraries or chrome uh, browser extensions you may go to that places so uh, it is unnecessary we can't do anything we can't debug their code we can't modify their code right so in that places it would be very distracting for us so here you need to have an option you can have an option here settings and you have a ignore list go here ignore list and now you, you can see the debugger will skip these scripts so you need to add add one pattern like i will be adding like star asterisk analytics so usually this analytics will be there in our applications where uh, for any of the exceptions they will be throwing it would be stopped so the time we are um, debugging our code or any issue or any exception occurred in this analytics.js also this will be throwing an error and the debug would be going there so instead that if you add some of the patterns like this and if you keep an add condition like this so our browser will would ignore this type of files so there come you can uh, uh, only concentrate on your code and you can debug whatever you need so that's the main usage of this black box script so coming to the fourth one throttle so here if you have an application so let's say i have taken one sample uh, flipkart application here so you have you have an application you have developed this application you can see that uh, your uh, network could be very fast enough so you may feel that your application is very fast enough and it is very uh, very much good at the performance levels but you need to check the your application at different network speeds so for this you have an option called fast 3g or slow 3g and offline options as well so you need to use these options and you need to understand how your application is behaving in different network speeds so that you can give a better experience to your users your customers in this network as well so if you are not satisfied with this fast 3g slow 3g you can add the custom as well you can create a custom profile name like mynet and you can give your download speed and upload speed and you can keep that speed here so that you can test your application with respect to those network speeds so that's the uh, with this you can understand and improve your performance performance of the website to the particular network speeds so that's the main advantage of this throttling network so also we have another option called filtering so in the network you may understand these are the filters like if i keep all i will get all the request network request if i keep x hr i will be getting only the http request js css so this is a type of filtering but we have another type of network filter as well so if you observe here if i click is is catchy so if i click here is catchy so all the files which are required i mean let me refresh it again so we can filter the files in this format as well so what all the files are cached so like if i say is catchy so it will show all the cached files all the cached files would be shown here uh, also you can have other options like is running so sometimes there would be some running uh, which takes http request which takes long time so you can identify that with this filter as well also in order to for the performance you can check like this larger file which is more than 100k so in this way you can understand which file has more size so more size files are responsible for uh, performance bottlenecks so in this way you can filter what are the larger files what are the small files which files are coming from cache which file is still executing 
once after the application was loaded also some files would be still loading so what are those files you can understand so this is a way of network filtering uh, another way of network filtering so now the sixth point we can see if you observe if you want to do any of the fetch calls or http network calls in your application and if you are not familiar with how to do what are the headers i need to pass what all the body how should be the uh, url and all oh, those syntax so you can understand like this so just right click this you will be having a copy option here copy as fetch so now if you copy as fetch this now and uh, i will be copying this in one of the notepad so that we can clearly observe what is uh, there here. I'm, I'm copying the fetch request for that. So in this fetch request, you can have what all the bodies or headers you need to pass. You can have everything here. Like uh, I will paste this here. So he, see, you have a fetch request and you, what is the URL you need to trigger. So this is a URL you need to trigger. And these are the headers you need to pass. And these are all the request headers you need to pass. So in this way, you can understand or you can copy what is the exact uh, Ajax request and headers you need to pass. So that's that's the one way. Uh, so this will be helpful if you are new to any project and you want to understand how you are you, know, you are trying to send an, uh, any of the HTTP request. So this option would be helpful at that point. So these are the six uh, dev tools we, we could learn in this video. Hope you understand the video. Thanks for watching.